Hello everyone, my name is Mateusz Busz. I am a chief social engineer and the head of C++ Competency Center at IPAM Systems. I am also a C++ trainer, consultant, and an active voting member of the ISO C++ committee. Um, today, um, we'll be talking about a physical units library um, that I think is one of the biggest things we are missing in, in C++, in standard library that we have in, in, in our language. Uh, I don't have a solution for you, but I have some ideas that I would like to share. And basically, we will be like, presenting them and then discussing them during the talk today. But why do we care? Why do we need such a library? Probably most of you are familiar with Mars Climate Orbiter. This was the famous mistake of, of engineering. Uh, it was a robotic space probe that was launched in 98 by NASA. It was meant to reach the uh, Mars orbit and do some experiments there. It costed a lot of money for the spacecraft, for, the, for, for launching it, for, for operations and so on. And the mission began in 1999, in September. And this is the planetary trajectory of the, of the orbiter. It was about to go to the orbit here. This is Earth there. So at some point, the orbiter went in the shade of the, or the Mars, so we lost the, the communication with it, and we never established it again. Uh, what happened is that plant trajectory is dead. This was the actual trajectory. It's only like 150 kilometers different, difference in like a space size, it's nothing. But it turned out that it was enough to, to, to make the, uh, uh, the space probe disintegrate in the Mars orbit and, and, and due to gravitational pressures and, and, and some stresses. Uh, what went wrong? Uh, the problem was that uh, two teams were separately developing the, uh, the code. One of the team was Lockheed Martin, another one was NASA. NASA was, was implementing their, their code according to specifications in, in SI, st International Standard Units system, and Lockheed Martin did it in US customary units. And because of this, some thrusters on the, on the orbiter was calculating stuff in pounds per second, and the other part of the soft software re required this in Newton set of seconds. As a result, we lost a lot of money and time. And the funny thing is that, that Carl Pilcher, that was a science director at NASA at that point, said that this was that the human errors occur all the time. That was not a problem. Uh, people do mistakes. We have systems to, to fix our mistakes. I don't know if that's true for, for your work, but if I will make a mistake at my work, I will be accountable for it. At least I would I would feel accountable for it. And I don't want to make mistakes and, and account for on, some, on some machines on, on some systems to, to correct those errors automatically after I. I submit the, the software. Um, so probably you know about the Mars Climate Orbiter already, but why do I personally care? A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, so it was like three years ago or so, or so I was doing competition flying in gliders. Uh, I was flying in sometimes dangerous areas like those in high mountains, sometimes Alps and in US here too. And I was accounting really on this small device here. This is a car navigation system with Windows CE on, the, on board. And there is an application, open source application for GPS navigation for, 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 for aviation. I was a contributor to, to this for several years. This application looks like this. This is our glider. This is our target that we want to reach. This is some terrain. There is some wind speed. We have some altitude. We have some glider with some specific, uh, let's say, performance characteristics and we want to reach this target. And all of this dotted area is the area that we are not able to reach from that point with current speed and current uh, flight pattern. This is the same visible in vertical view. When I'm writing my, uh, my software and or I'm flying the plane, I want to make sure that I'm able to, to go over this hill or not. Because it's so close. I don't want to make many, many mistakes here because glider doesn't have an engine and I cannot go up easily when I go down and I can try land only once. Second one is probably not, not the best idea. So uh, I don't want to blame the software because software is great. It was it's written by two or three engineers 
uh, that are spending a lot of their free time on doing this, and a lot of people are, are using this software. It's, it's stable, it's secure, a lot of competition pilots, the best pilots in the world are using this. So I don't want to blame the project in any way. But the project inherited its calculated engine from some other, another open source project that was developed like in the 90s, and uh, mostly in C. And this is the, this, this is the interface, yes? Distance bearing, we have some latitude, longitude, and other latitude, longitude, we have distance bearing to a target. In the same header file, there are a few other functions. This is another function. And notice the, the order of, of those arguments. Yes? Uh, if you think that's wrong, uh, it can be worse. <laughs> yes. So, so th this is taken from 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 from, from the from, from the header file. I'm not the fan of those cons, as you noticed. And uh, there are uh, different different dimensions here. Yes, we have distance, we have speed, we have another speed somewhere, we have uh, uh, we have time to go, and and other stuff in one function. Also, there are some calculation stuff. Do you want to write code like this? I'm not. I don't want to do it. So, did you ever have to write the code like this? I don't mean like units, maybe it was like, like price, it was anything else that was using fundamental types. I feel that most of engineers did it sometime in their life, not using strong types. Why, 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 are, do you do you, why are we are using this? We are doing this because, first of all, we don't have the support for it in the standard library. We don't have st strong type devs yet. We don't have support for things li 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 like physical units library there. I've noticed, because I'm a C++ trainer, so I'm visiting different corporations, that after C++ 11 was shipped and Chrono appeared publicly to everyone, people started to use Chrono much more often than, 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 than other open source libraries that were available earlier. So putting something in a standard automatically makes it more popular in the code, both in the open source and in production. Chrono is great. Date comes in C++ 20, which is even better, together with, together with what we have in Chrono. But this is only about time. We don't have other units there. We don't have good alternatives there. Uh, most of them provide poor user experience. If you've seen some compilation errors and you see some today, you will know what, what I mean. Uh, if you want to use like boost units, there are heavy dependencies on other boosts. So you have to like import nearly half of boost to, to, to make boost units work. And I don't know how it's for your companies, but in most companies is that, that either you can use standard library or boost or nothing else. And because, because other free party libraries are not trusted or not that easy to put through, through, through this uh, lawyers and, and, and legal stuff to, to, make, to make it allowed to, to, to work in, in, the, in the official production code. Implementing a good library by ourselves is hard, especially things like physical units library. So, so that's why we need some stuff done for, for the community, by the community. So let's do something about this. Uh, first, let's talk about some terms of definitions that are needed for this, for this domain, so we will know what we are talking about. There is an international system of units, SI. It has seven base units. It has 22 named units, 20 prefixes to the units and unit symbols. Base units are time, length, mass, electric current, thermodynamic te temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. Both of them, all of them have, are having their symbols, symbols of their units, and name of the units. We have a lot of derived units that are expressed in base units, like area in square meters, volume, velocity, meters per second, acceleration, and many others. We have also a lot of derived units that have their own symbol, like hertz, pascal, watt, or, or um, volt, or, or other ohm here. They can be expressed either in base units or in another SI units, like here. What is dimensional analysis? It's basically solving such an equ equation. We have power, energy, time. You can have the result in watts in joules per second, or in any of those. And you have to somehow be able to, to produce it or, or, or calculate it every time we have, we have specific uh, 
units in our equation. Also, uh, these are the operations that we can do. You can have some unit and you can divide it by, by integer, by scalar. It's just five kilometers in this way. We may have conversions from hours to seconds, from kilometers plus meters or meters and so on. Or we can change the dimensions, like kilometers divided by seconds gives you, for example, meters per second. Or you can do other stuff like, like frequency from, from dividing the, the scalar by, by time. Or sometimes you also, also will remove all of the units, just ending up with a scalar. There are a lot of prefixes. Uh, we have std ratio that is doing this right now, nicely in our standard. And these are basically the, the most important ones. There is more than one system of measurement, which we know from the Mars Climate Orbiter example, yes? SI is not the only one. We have, we have like, US has its own. There is also some so imperial one and so on. And we have to somehow support all, all of those. Um, after boost unit documentation, let's define uh, some terms. Base dimension is the measurable entity of interest. Essentially, it's a tag type, just to know what we are expressing, if it's length, mass, time, or something else. Dimension is base dimension um, with some exponent, like length is, is this base dimension to the exponent 1, area to the exponent 2, or velocity is length per time. Base unit is a specific base, um, specific measure of, the, of dimension for specific, yeah, for specific base dimension. So length is expressed in meters by default. This is the default uh, unit for, for length according to SI units. On the other hand, unit is the set of those base units with some exponents again. And boost units also defines things called systems, but we will not scope on those too much. But the most important part here is a quantity. It's a concrete amount of unit. It's value together with a unit, then we know what it is uh, and, and, and how many of, uh, how much of, of, this of this dimension it is. So 10 meters is a quantity. 10 is not a quantity, meters is not a quantity, 10 meters is a quantity. Current state, what we, ha what we have right now on the market. <coughs> uh, for this, I will compare a really simple example. I would I like to have a function that calculates average speed for some distance, duration, and do simple equation like this. This is a really simple example. We, we can think about much more complicated, but it's a slide work. And also you'll find out that this simple example is already really complicated for some, for some cases. I would like to be able to, to measure this average speed li like providing 20, 220 kilometers to hours and have this in kilometers per hours. Or I would like to have the same for miles and two hours. I expect compile time safety. I expect uh, support for multiple units and unit prefixes, like for those two use cases. No runtime overhead, so it should be as fast as, as done by, by hand with doubles. And let's right now not scope on the IO output, so that's why I just provided the units here by myself. This is a totally different subject for a totally different talk. It's uh, also a huge thing, how to format those data. Existing solutions. We'll talk about two of them to the today. We'll talk about boost units and about units library by, by Nick Holthouse. There are more, but those are, the, I think, the, most, the best one, and they are having some different design choices that I would like to highlight today. There's also, also Stud Chrono that should be probably our um, reference for, for, for design, design, designing such a library. It, it is by Howard Hinnant that did first for this for time, then, then for day. So let's implement this toy example in boost units. First of all, you have to implement in a lot of headers. This is, this is how, how boost units is designed. They are having uh, hundreds of headers. And, and of course, there are some aggregates. Like for SI, you can have all SI in one header. Um, but uh, all other stuff, like, like quantity, and some other helpers are in dedicated headers, and sometimes it's really hard to know which header you should include because there are also first product declarations. And something compiles, but not necessarily, and there are some strange compile time errors. 
saying that you have th th that you don't have implementation for something and so on. So it's not that user friendly. For the slideware, I will use this this namespace alias for boost units. And right away, at the very beginning, I already have to provide some helpers because the library by itself doesn't provide me the, the types I need. There is no kilometer, for example. I have to say that I want to have SI length and scale it in by dimension 10 to third exponent. This will be my kilometer base unit, and length kilometer will be then base unit unit type. I have to do this for similar stuff for length and similar stuff for, for time hour because there is nothing there for, for, for kilometers, miles, and hours. So let's implement a simple example. We have average speed, uh, length, time, velocity, doing the division, and doing our use cases. I put here result to auto. Then I have to create kilometer per hour because it's also not there and put it to cast it, the result, to kilometer per hour. The same for, for miles. The problem here is that uh, that code works, but it's, if you look into assembly, it's not the same as you would do this with doubles. Why? Because we are using here SI length. SI length is using default unit for, for length, so it's using meters, and it's using seconds here. And it's producing meters per second here, so you have to first convert everything from kilometers to meters, uh, from, from hours to seconds, and then do it back again, which makes additional divisions and multiplications that are actually, in this case, not needed. Users provide, user provided things in specific units, and they expected the same units to be, to be expressed in the derived units, but a lot of conversions were done in the, in, in the meantime. So let's try to change it. Let, let's create a template for it. We can try to make do this this way. We have type name length, time, quantity of length, quantity of time, and auto. It's too generic. Yes, it, it's, it can. We c we named it length or time, but it actually can be I don't know force and energy. Yes, it's only the name. So everything can be can be put here. So let's try again. Uh, we define here a more specialized template quantity of unit of length dimension, time dimension, so it's fine. We have to provide any length system and a time system as template parameters and then the present representation. It's better, but we still don't know what we are getting back. It's auto. It can be any different stuff. If you make a here an error, like do multiply set division, we'll not get even velocity from this. And we expect to have velocity in a return type. So if you want to make sure that you are returning velocity and to tell to the user that this strange function with strange name returns you a velocity, you have to do something like this. You have to calculate velocity uh, the, by yourself. So you are doing divide type of helper, and you are dividing length dimension with current length system, time dimension with time current time system, and you get quantity of velocity with specific time system that was provided by the specific unit system provided by the user. However, you are here duplicated all of the physical units library logic because you have to know if you have to divide it or multiply and, and, and how to do it. So you, know, you have to know the recipe for that type, which is not user friendly. So for next cases, let's use this one. This is shorter for the slide work. And this is this case. So if you want to pass at 220 kilometers, you can do it this way. You can put two hours and you have a result. It's the same for speed, for, for miles. If you have variables, let's say those are variables instead of, if the, is, instead of uh, uh, values, you can put it and create new variables for, from this and then put them to speed. I will just have those additional examples so you can see the differences, especially when user-defined literals come into play. So the good thing. Uh, is I think that Boost Units has the widest adoption right now in the community because it's part of Boost. It supports a lot of stuff, sometimes even more than you expect, but sometimes also doesn't contain stuff that you need. You saw how many helpers you had to do for simple operations. It has high flexibility and accessibility. You can add anything there. Uh, 
const actually, this is pre C11 design, but constex was added to it, so it works, works in compile time, which is good. And quantity can use any number like type, so you can use double, you can use float, you can use complex for this. It's nice. Cons. The design is pretty old. It uses a lot of macros and uses a lot of boost MPL. Uh, and mm, it's not only my opinion, but also I, 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 I like mm, quote here some other experts that it's not easy to use. In order to use it, you have to be both expert in C++ and in physical units domain in order to understand how to use this domain properly and how to interpret errors from it properly. Okay, so, so let's try the, another library from Nick Holthouse. The same type of example. This is only one header there. And we have this unit literals that I just imported here to make slides shorter. Average speed, this is the only way to, to, to implement this in, in this unit, in generic way. So it can be everything. It can be uh, any type, you can, can put a vector and string here. Yes? So, but the good stuff is that actually this library provides you the type traits to find if it's length, time, or velocity. So you can put static assets there, but it's still bad because it is actually uh, being used in any overload resolution for name average speed, no matter what type is it. On the, then the later compile error will come, saying that the static assert failed. And you, you can provide more, more specialized templates here because uh, it's implemented that way that units are actually, they nest each other. So you have like meter as a base unit, and then if you want to define kilometer, it's defined as a, uh, as a, mm, some changed or, or multi multiplied version <coughs> of meter. So it's not that easy to find where this length unit tag is put in the, t in the type here. It can be in the, f in, the, in, the, in the first nesting or second or, or third nesting, and so you don't know how to specialize it or, or provide the, this partial specialization here in the template. So let's work our toy, toy example here. When it supports UDLs, which is nice. If you have variables, you can create this this way or this way. I spoke with Walter Brown on CPPCon last year about this design. Uh, I had something similar. I, I also so was, was like using uh, thing, mm, the design suggested or, or provided by, by Chrono. We already used to having seconds as a type. But seconds or meter or meters is not a unit. Uh, sorry, it's not a quantity, it's a unit of, of, of quantity, yes? So we shouldn't write like, like two meter or something. It's meter is a unit, not, not, not a quantity. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure still if it's good design or not. Uh, it's still under discussion, but, but I tend to, to say that I would prefer to write quantity in meters rather, rather than meters free. Good things. One header, uh, compile time, UDL support. Uh, bad things, it's hard to extend it with base units, you will see later on why. Poor compile time error messages, the same as, as boost. You'll see also the, the examples later on. Uh, there is no representation for dimensions, there are only units. And we are mixing quantities with units, we don't know exactly what we are talking about. And it's not easy to table for generic programming because of those static assets and lack of possibility to provide stat the partial specializations for, speci for specific dimensions because it basically doesn't have dimensions, it has units only. So issues with those current solutions. Uh, let's do something like this. We have this boost unit quantity length, and we provide here some a times si kilo si meters. We try to compile that and we end up with such an error. Uh, we know that GCC is bad with, with compact errors, yes, so let's try tr let's try Clang, that should be better. Do you know what's wrong? No value conversion from quantity uh, mm, to quantity, three dots, three dots. Hmm. <laughs> And 
the, the problem is that there are not, that the implicit conversions are not allowed here. And I don't know why, actu actually, because when you have meters here and want to have kilometers, the kilometers always would fit in meters that are the default for length. So there's no, no truncation sheet here, never. So implicit conversion should be allowed. It's not allowed, so you have to put explicit conversion here. Then it works fine, you have no error messages. But it's not easy to find out from this error. Okay, so let's go back to our toy example and make a mistake here. This is the, the error. Notice three dots here. This is the second part of the error. And this is only the one line of the error. The, 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 this one that has an error, yes? Now you're talking about all other like, like, like 10 pages saying instantiation of a template because then it will be much too, much, much too many stuff to analyze. So it's not that easy to understand what's wrong, and this is one of the simplest, simplest things that you can do in the physical units library, uh, cal calculating DSP from two dimensions. So let's try the other library. Oh, sorry, Clang. Uh, Clang produces much, <coughs> much, much, much smaller error lock. It fits on one screen. There are a lot of three dots here. Do you know what's wrong? <laughs> if you are look closely, there is one and minus one here. But I would say that sometimes shorter error messages are not necessarily better. <laughs> All of the context was removed by the compiler, yes? So let's try the other library. The same problem. We have here multiplication instead of division. We have static assert. We've heard yesterday that the static asserts are, are good. And actually, yeah, the, the, the error is nice. We had units are not compatible. It's convertible unit from to, but actually you don't know what you have. There's no context in this case. You know that it just failed, but you don't know what, you, what, what was the source of the problem. Clank is better. Ah, and static assert. Uh, as you see, sometimes are not the best solution. First of all, in case of this library, they do not influence overall resolution process because the, the, those are in those are implementation rather than in the in the type of the of the function template. Yes, this function template took everything, literally everything. And for some compilers, do provide enough context. Clank is better. Clank actually says us that units is, are not compatible, and it was done because requirement for is com convertible units for such a type was failed. Of course, this type is still not readable, but at least we know what's wrong, why it failed, what, what, what didn't pass the, the check. So I would recommend GCC doing similar stuff in the future. It's much better for, for, for the, let's say, debuggability in compile time. But can you know that's the problem with lack of division here, division, lack of the division here? It's really hard to understand it. Yes? So I would say that there is a need to modernize our toolbox. For most template programming, mm, libraries that we have right now, how often do you see errors from those? Probably once a month or something like this, because you don't tend to make errors there too often. But the whole purpose of having this library, physical library in our toolbox, is to generate those error messages. This is, this is the reason why it exists. And some engineer working with it will have those error messages like 30 times a day. So it has to be user friendly. We have to rethink stuff how we do it. Because current solutions that we know how to do for other stuff, for MPLs, for, for other stuff that are easy to use and hard to abuse, it's not the, it's, it's not the case here. So let's try to rethink this and, and think how we can do this better. How, compile time errors are not the only problem we have. We want to debug this. I mean, I think that, see that, that the, uh, the focus is not, maybe, maybe someone can, can change this because this is a pretty small font. If you can tune it, yeah, it's much better, yeah. Okay, so this is how we see this in the debugger. We have boost units quantity, boost units double, and boost units double. The same type? This is how the debugger sees it. 
So let's try with, with text GDB. Hmm, breakpoint. Uh, you know what we are working with? Not that easy, yes? Uh, let's try to maybe do P type on D. Even longer, yes? So there are some defaults were removed in previous cases. It's not that user friendly to work with. Yes. Other library. The same. Unit double linear scale, unit double linear scale. Breakpoint, a bit shorter, but still not really readable. And P type, similar stuff. We should rethink this too, how to make it better for the user. Besides that, there are a lot of macros being used in both of the cases. I don't, sometimes we have to use macros, yes? But I'm pretty sure I would be killed by ISO committee when they would like to standardize something to the library with macros in the interface. I'm dead <laughs> already <laughs> even talking about this. So there, there cannot be macros in the, in the interface in order to be standardized in the library. We want to make sure that people can extend it because we cannot provide solution for everyone. And sometimes if you want to provide a solution for everyone, you will miss something, some parts anyway, and it will be too hard to use for a, for a typical user. So you have to make it easy to extend. Um, in most cases, adding derived dimensions is pretty easy. However, adding base dimensions is hard or nearly impossible. For example, for boost units, uh, base dimension is defined as, as in fact, as an um, in integral here, after some, after some tag type. And it's stated that order is completely arbitrary, uh, but, it, but just those enums has to be, sorry, has to be unique. And uh, negative values are reserved for the library, positive can be used by the user. But imagine that we have two vendors doing some extensions, and both of them, of course, select one as, as, as the base for their unit. And we have vendor C that wants to use solutions for, for, from vendor A and B together. And we have a problem, yes? Because both of them will use the same identifier. For, of course, different dimensions. So other library is even harder to extend because the base unit primary class template that's being used in a base of the engine of it has parameters for every dimension of SI plus some additional like byte or radian. If you would like to add something to it, you have to modify the, the primary base template, which will mean that, that you will have to rewrite all of the library that is provided by you and all of the users that, that, that extended it already. So it's not really easy to extend. OK, so I'm complaining all the time, yes? So let's try to find out what we can do with it. And uh, I will switch to the implementation I have right now. It's not a complete sol solution. It is maybe no, even not the solution for the library. It's like battlefield right now for me to test the ideas how to make this more user friendly. Maybe at some point it will be ready for standardization or maybe some other library based on the feedback from, from this will, will be uh, standardized, but I would really like to make it happen and I'm really looking for, for help here. So, requirements. Safety and performance, yes? Strong types, tablet beta programming, concepts, or the things. The best possible user experience. I think this should be maybe even the first point here. As I said, these errors will happen always, often, for the engineers. And they have to be user friendly. No macros in the user interface, because otherwise ICC plus committee will kill us. No external dependencies. Easy accessibility. Possibility to be standardized as a freestanding part of C++ standard library. As a freestanding, I mean new freestanding, not, not the current one, because current one is, is broken. So let's talk about some basic types in, in my, my solution. I, dimension. Dimension is a type list that we know already from, 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 from the keynote today. Type lists are, are great. So this is type list. Type list of exponents. Exponents of one or more base dimensions. 
So what is exponent? Exponent is a base dimension and a value similar to what we have in boost. boost base dimension is a unique sortable compact time value. Right now I'm using integral constant. So basically I'm having exactly the same problem that boost does. Yes? So what, how can we fix this? There is a new feature in C++20 and it was implemented already in GCC 9, but there are a lot of bugs there. I already submitted like six or seven bugs and they are still not, not, not resolved. Uh, we can put classes as non-type template parameters, simple classes. Those classes cannot be unions and they, they have to provide strong structural equality, which according to the second paper here, because the definition was changed here, has to provide a defaulted equals parameter. Starship is not the solution here anymore. So we have this fixed string for entity and we can provide this hello parameter as you seen today in the keynote. So for our needs, we can either use this fixed string and say, for example, length or mass. It's already pretty unique name. And if two vendors will select some, create some new dimension, probably if they will sell, use the same name, probably they meant the same. So it's fine. Yes. So it may be a good thing to create values that are unique and easy to extend. And then our exponent will just use this as a value, not as a type. So extensibility, let's say it's solved in this way. Yeah. OK. So for example, we can express velocity in the following way. We have dimension, exponent, length to exponent 1, time to exponent minus 1. Such an approach improves user experience because we have only the information that is needed here. We don't have other, all of the other cases with zero saying that we, do, we don't have here the, the mass, we don't have here time, we don't have here something. We are only using things that we have. So we will end up with different type lists of different length with different um, base dimensions in it. But only the information that is needed is there. However, we have a problem in this case. We have like those two equations, one meter divided one second and two divided two seconds times one meter. Different order, the same result, but how to produce the same type from it? For that, I provided make dimension helper that provides unique ordering of exponents. If we have a list of exponents and we find uh, two elements of the same dimension, we just um, add or subtract them depending on the exponent value. If it turned out that we have like plus one and minus one, so the result is zero, we just remove it from the type list. So to form a velocity, you have to provide make dimension exponent based in length one, based in time minus one, and that's good. However, we have to remember that every time we have to use make dimension instead of just providing the type list by ourselves because we can provide it in a different way that the implementation um, uh, decided to order this. So we always have to remember to use this make dimension. And I don't know right now the, uh, the solution in compile time to force creation of the type only with that, with that type trait. So users will not be able to do it by themselves. With, with, with strong types, with classes, it's easy, yes? Private copy constructor, factory method, done. Here, it's not that easy. Yes? This module it won't act for the type only the factory uh, function or the, the factory template. Yeah, we won't be able to name the mechanism. Yes, so, yeah, you're right, actually. So the comment is that with modules, uh, we can export the, the, just the factory and don't, and don't export the implementation of the, of the type. So your user will not be able to instantiate the type by themselves. It may actually work. OK, so let's move forward. We have to, so we want to, you have the dimension, you want to create a unit. Unit has a dimension and a ratio. So for example, meter will be unit of dimension length, ratio one. Quantity, quantity, is the amount of specific dimension. Yeah, as we this specified this in during the, the, the um, wording, the, the uh, terms definition part. So is the amount of specific dimension in specific unit. 
We have quantity that has dimension, unit, and representation. Interface still is really similar to chrono duration right now, plus additional member functions. So we have multiplication of two different dimensions. This is not supported by, by, by ratio, by, by duration, because we always deal with time there. So we never actually end up with different dimension. Division of two, con of, of two quantities of different dimensions, in the same case, and, and division of scalar with a quantity. There is another, another member function in, in duration. There's, there's the quantity divided by the scalar, because you can divide two seconds by two. But you cannot divide two by two seconds because it's not a time anymore. Yes, in this case we had to add it. Also, Peter Sommerlat uh, on on ACCU suggested me that I could, should also provide static member function for one, in a, for order in order to, to make multiplications work easier, interpret meta programming stuff. So, example of of quantity. Velocity can be an alias template on quantity dimension velocity unit rep. Okay, so we have quantity, but there is a big question right now. What the qu what the quantity means? Is it an absolute or, the re or relative val value? It's a big question and, and, and a really important answer to, to, to provide. I don't have the answer right now, actually. For most dimensions, I think that relative values have sense. What does it... Where, where is absolute 123 meters? Can you point me this, this place? Where is absolute 123 meters? Where is zero, yes? If I'm sitting in a moving train, is my velocity zero? Or when the train stops, is my velocity zero, taking into account that the train sits on, a, on an Earth that is orbiting and, 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 and through all, all the galaxy? Where is velocity zero, yes? All of this is relative. However, we need some absolute values. Temperature, time, work with absolute values, and for that we will need absolute support. Uh, mm, I think that, that, that people decided that it is, because zero actually is, is somewhere when Jesus has born, let's say, rather than, than, than when, 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 I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I said that, that, that relative is for most of the units. But sometimes we need absolute. And I, this, that's exactly the, the point why we have time point in the chrono, yes? We have time point and the duration. And its time point is, 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 is absolute, duration is a, is a relative one there. And it's really needed. They as no. No, actually, uh, actually, a time point is. Yeah. Uh, so the most important part here is temperature. For this, we need really those absolute values. For time, maybe not. We can live without it. It's what, that's why I, I didn't think about it too much about time, but in tempu for temperatures, we need to provide something. So the other question is how to implement this. Yes, should we have two separate types like chrono does? But then how to name them? What's quantity, absolute quantity, or how to name them? And what to do with dimensions that don't have sense with, with absolute value? What's an absolute meter, yes? So maybe use as additional like class template parameter for quantity. Absolute equals false. Or maybe has a wrapper type, absolute of quantity. I still don't know what's the best solution here. If you have any suggestions, I'm open for, for discussion on this. We have, we have library of in, in, in a week, yes? So we can discuss this tomorrow, for example. OK, so let's talk about user experience. Generic programming, compile time errors, debugging. So do you remember this in those cases when I said that here, I don't know exactly, is it a velocity for boost units or for that library that basically I can put every here, every type here and it's wrong. The solution for this is concepts. Yes, so for boost, let's define quantity of as a 
Type trait, which actually is provided by, by boost, is quantity of dimension. Quantity dimension. We can provide select, say that length is a quantity of length dimension time the same, velocity the same. With this, we can write our function template in C20 style. This is like generic lambda, but, but applied for functions. So we have here auto, auto, auto. So everything is auto, but it's constrained by specific concepts. So this auto is constrained by time, this by length, and this has to be velocity. And now we don't have any problems, actually. And we exactly know from the interface what this function does, what it returns, what it gets. And you have compile time safety. The same we can do for the other library. Length and reuse those time and static assets that we are using in the implementation earlier. Time and velocity. And actually, we end up with exactly the same function declaration and implementation for both, for both libraries. So you can easily exchange libraries and have the same implementation in your code. Yes? Question? Yeah, what was the concept auto syntax? I said it's like generic, yes. It's C20. It's, it's already standardized, yes. So this is the third syntax that we agreed on, actually, that, that will work for us. The uh, concepts TS has had different third syntax that, had, that was really controversial, and we agreed that this one will work for us, and, and this is C20. Of course, you can write template stuff, but it will make my slide, slides longer. And I wanted to show you how, how the code may look in C20. So we can see that concepts are not only some syntactic sugar over the things that we can do right now with template metaprogramming stuff and, and partial specializations. With concepts here, we were able to solve problems that were not easy to solve with partial specialization of templates. We solved this for the second library for, for arguments and in both cases for return value. Also, concepts, for example, can be used to constrain class types class template types and used in template, which is which we will not be able to use enable if there. Yes, question? Do you know if, um, if non-static data members can use concepts? Non-static data members? If it's auto? Yes. Yeah. You can, mm, I think it can work. If you have, have non-type template parameter named auto, you can then use a static data member with the same auto. And it will be the value provided from the non type parameter. And you can constrain it with the concept too. You need to have an initializer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have, to, you have to initialize it every time. Okay, so I lied a bit regarding previous implementation slides. All of the types in my library are heavily conceptized, let's say. They're heavily using embrace with concepts. So I have concepts for type list, number, ratio, exponent, dimension, unit, quantity, and for all derived quantities, length, time, frequency, velocity. All of them are concepts defined like this one, that the concept velocity is, has to be a quantity type, and in this quantity type, dimension has to be the same as dimension velocity. This is how those concepts are being defined. So as I said, velocity is one of the simplest derived dimensions you can imagine. And this is how you can implement this in my solution. However, this alias will be lost quickly. Maybe in the same function where it's defined or in the same scope, it will live for a while. But at some point, compiler will lose it and will start showing you the alias. It will start showing you the, the actual type that is stored below the alias. So as a result, we get, again, huge error messages. The same as we've seen in other libraries. This is nothing different that, that was done there. And how we can actually solve this? It's a pity that we still don't have strong type types in the language. They will solve a lot of stuff here. So we have to look for some workarounds, and workarounds are, are never nice. So this will not be nice, but it will work, what I will show you. 
Let's go with inheritance. Let's make it not an alias, but a strong type that, that's deriving from the make dimension. Yes, this term, so then dimension velocity will never vanish in the type system, in the, in the compilation stuff. It's easy applicable to dimension and unit classes. Quantity is a bit more challenging because it's a, it's a huge uh, class template. But we have a problem. We have a velocity out of v equals meters times seconds. This is operator that gets quantity of length, quantity of time here for dimensions, and has to produce actually quantity with dimension velocity, which is a strong type as a child child type of our of, of, of our quantity type. Yes, how to produce a child type from, from from base type? I didn't find a good solution for it, so I invented something called called mm, ah. First, yeah, I could, it's called uh, upcasting traits. But to implement any traits, we have a new tool in the C20 called the identity meta, meta function. So basically, it's the same type that you provide, is provided by type. So you can write any type trait that way with, with type identity. We'll see, we'll see an example in, in a minute. So, upcasting facility. I provided upcast base as a base class that just do a CRT, yeah, CRTP. So provide the, the type of the child class here and put it in here as a base type. So for example, if you have dimension, we inherit dimension from upcast base of dimension of ease. Yes, so we provide this type exactly to our upcast base, CRTP. Then I have upcast table concept, saying that something is upcast table if the type has base type, member type here, and it is derived from upcast base of the type def defined here. Yes, so this is upcast table. And then you have some helper aliases saying upcast from, it will be T base type. Notice that I, have, I do not have type name here because in C20 it's not needed anymore. And upcast 2 is this type identity that basically provides the same T as a type in this, in this type trait. Upcasting traits is a simple type trait saying that default implementation of from t just cast to the same t. And they have an underscore t helper. So with this, I have this dimension from up, up, that is inherits from upcast based. I have this dimension velocity that is created by make the dimension. And I can provide upcasting traits, upcast from dimension velocity upcast to dimension velocity. So it basically will get this base type here, this dimension, and will upcast to uh, this dimension. I would really love your help to, to, to find out how to automate this. So I don't have to write this upcasting trade specialization every time I do make dimension of t. If I could write something different than macro <laughs> to do it, it would be great because right now all of my code is trashed with those upcasting traits. With unit, we have the same. Meter derives from unit, and we have upcasting traits. Upcast from meter, upcast to meter. We can define unit with prefix. Like kilometer is a kilo meter. It will define also this is a helper. Alias, it will produce exactly a unit with, with good ratio. Ratio defined by kilo, yes? And again, upcasting traits. Derived unit. We can say that kilometer per hour is a derived unit, also alias helper, that will, will produce unit with good ratio determined from those two. It will take ratio from kilometer, ratio from hour. We'll know that velocity is created by, by division of those. So we'll divide ratios and we'll put those, this divided ratio here. So you don't have to calculate it by yourself. And again, upcasting traits. With quantity, we have more problems. We cannot easily do upcasting traits for, for quantity. This is an alias. But this alias is not a specific alias to specific type. It's still an alias template. So we cannot write something like this, that length 
is derived from quantity, and we have upcasting traits from upcast from length of Europe and upcast to Europe because those are not specific types, and we get an error saying that template parameters not that are not deducible in partial specialization. But actually, I'm not sure if you should have uh, upcasting facility for, for like length. Quantity of dim dim dimension length is still good for me. But if you could do it for specific types, maybe it should it, for sure it, it should be done then in in quantity based type somewhere automatically and we'll have a lot of then a, a lot of different uh, specialization of, of of those upcasting traits which i'm not sure it will not in somehow influence the performance i don't know if the number of specialization if the, the changes the number of performance or not louis do you have some experience if you so the number of specializations of a template influence the let's say, resolution of, the, of this template or not? Yeah. Yeah, so probably if you have more of those specializations, it would be slower. Yeah, it's sort of part of the overall resolution. Uh, but it's so, you know, it's, it's so many different properties. Yeah, so actually for those dimensions and, and, and units, we'll have only a few, few, maybe 50, 60 of them. But if you put it for every quantity of every representation with every possible unit there, we'll have like hundreds of those specializations. And it may influence the, the compile time. So before with an alias, sorry, we had this one. After with upcasting traits, we have this one saying that D is a quantity of dimension velocity, kilometer per hour, long, long hint. And I think it's quite good. And I think it's, it's worth doing this upcasting traits for everything. And if you would know how to automate this, it would be great. So. Another possibility for us to make it may maybe uh, more user friendly is using CTAT. CTAT, we have expert of CTAT here. We'll have a talk in an hour, in, in an hour or a half an hour from now. Just after lunch. Yeah, just after lunch about CTAT. Uh, C17 CTAT is working nice for classes, class templates, but it doesn't work for aliases. For aliases, you have still to provide the types. With C20, it will be fixed. This is the paper. And you'll be able to write it even for alias, like PMR vector is an alias to, to vector. You'll be able to do CTATs for aliases. So how, we, how we can we do this for, for our library? Uh, this is our quantity. We have some, some CTAT helper here. And, and we have this alias length. And you can say length of three creates as a quantity dimension length meter meter integer because it will take a representation from here with CTAT and will take meter as a default unit for, 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 for this dimension. If you take double here, it will produce us the same with double. So again, double will be determined by CTAT. Unfortunately, this is where CTAT stops in C20. And uh, when we start to provide at least one template parameters, CTAT is not working anymore. So if we fix the unit smile instead of meter here, we end up here with double and here with double because this is the default. We didn't provide int here explicitly. When you provide float, of course, we have float. I don't know, I know why it is like this, but I really don't like it. And probably Timur will provide more information on this one. But I would like to show you another case before I will give you a voice. Yeah, but, but give me, let's describe this one. Yeah. And in a minute. And basically, this is a bit strange for me because if you do nearly the same, you'll provide another alias saying that miles is length of mile. So basically, I fix this mile here in an alias rather than putting this by, by myself in a type. So basically, I'm doing, from user perspective, I'm doing exactly the same. Now, the CTAT works for this representation, yes? I know that here is, we're talking about types here, we're talking about placeholder types, which is different from the language perspective, and that's probably what you wanted to say, Timur. Yeah. But from the user perspective, uh, we will be, if you will be working with different representations, we will need uh, to provide those aliases. And again, we have this sentence, meters is not a quantity, yes? So should we provide those aliases or not? The initial proposal of the paper had support for this, but it was it, it didn't pass through evolution. 
if there will be some additional support saying that uh, I want to opt in for this feature somehow, maybe in C++ 23, it could make it easier for this specific library. So I mean, th by this feature, I mean that, that the, the CTAT will be able to override the defaults of the template. Another useful stuff, contracts. Every function has a contract. It's either expressed by the type system or by comment or documentation of the function or by some assert or static assert or anything. So I use here the GSL expects just to say that in the case of division, I want my right hand side to not be zero, yes? And what I get? I get a compile time error. Expects pass three arguments but takes just one. What does it mean? It means that the ma ma macro say this this first argument to the macro, this is second one, this is third one. Because there are commas. So I can do this stuff alias and put the alias here and it works, yes? I can also do something like this. Remove CVRF, which is a new type rate in C20, similar to DK. And then it works. But I still have some issues. But first of all, we are using macros in a header file, which is wrong by definition because of the ODR, yes? Second thing, this is not a part of function signature. So if I would just make a semicolon here and put implementation somewhere else, user seeing the semicolon or just looking for it in the cppreference.com, they will not know anything about the contract of this function. So this is where contracts comes, yes? This is part of the signature. And it works nicely with commas. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a macro. And it also will optimize code for, for this because static analyzers and, and compiler optimizers will use this as a hint how to optimize the code. It's much, much better. It's a cool feature. So let's see how this, our toy example can be implemented with our library. You probably already know, but I have to provide it because I, I provided this for two other libraries. So you have this uh, velocity concept returned from our average speed, length, time, and that's all with UDLs with arguments and, and variables. So you put unit length of kilometer. And I think that's better than saying kilometers 220. So let's see how it works from the compilation point of view. So those user experience stuff. I again have a problem here. And GCC provides me this error. It fits on my screen. It says that we have conversion from quantity units dimension and there's dim length one, dim time one. And yeah, it's repeated here, as you can see. To non-scalar type, dimension velocity kilometers per hour. So actually here is a good type already. So, so this is at least a good improvement here. Didn't work out. Repeating of this unit here uh, make the error longer. So it may be not that user, from good from the user, user experience on where, while analyzing this specific error log, but it actually makes the design easier, see that more, more, more be works better that you can see in the other slide. So let's assume we will remove one of those dimensions. So probably we have to remove one from the quantity because units will still, units still, would still need this, this dimension. So instead of having here the velocity, we'll not be able to specify velocity, it will be only quantity because we cannot say it's velocity. It's quantity of unit kilometer per hour because dimension is stored here, not in a quantity. Quantity type doesn't have a parameter that could allow us to provide an alias template. So already it's a bit less verbose because we have to know all the units by heart and know what, what units, which units is which dimension. For some strange uh, dimensions probably it's not that easy to know for everyone. Error lock is much shorter, yes? So that's good. But if you want to use it, actually, this is how it was before. We had quantity with dimensions. If you are first argument, we had this alias template for length. Right now, we have only quantity of unit. We have units length D3. We know these are, these are three meters. We have quantity of three. Hmm, what, what it is, yes? 
The same if you get some function that gets any quantity but won't wor works to, to pass it to, and, and, to, and work with length. Here we know that we are working with length. Here we have only quantity. So I would say that maybe for this specific error lock, repeating of this dimension here, broken dimension, is, is wrong. But from this point of view, it has some benefits. But actually, this is not the biggest problem here because this is where you pro provide specific, uh, specific unit here. So basically, you provide any length, any time, but you always produce kilometers per hour as a result, which is actually not what you want here. If you put here a concept, we have totally different error logs. The error logs for concepts look like this. That in instantiation of unit velocity of average speed, placeholder constraints are not satisfied for by this result. Concept velocity was not successful. It looks like this. And here, the part, the same part, is broken. And the same part right now implemented is in that way that this T U U T for some meta same. I'm using the uh, uh, implementation from Casey Carter. It's reference implementation for for, for, for for what we standardized, but probably quality of implementation maybe for libraries will be even better. So the same later on, if you, if you continue the error, says that for dimension length, dimension time, and velocity, this is not the same because T and U is different. Yes, and this is another, this is the same done for for the inverted case. So it's actually pretty good to analyze. Maybe not short, but exactly you are provided step by step what went wrong, which I think is good. And in this case, you don't have this repeated dimension problem at all. Talking about the debugging. This is, again, breakpoint in the same function. This is what the debugger says. Quantity, dimension length, kilometer double. Quantity, dimension time, hour double. So we know types here already. Breakpoint in GDB, it's obvious, yes? Quantity, dimension, length, kilometer, double. Quantity, time, hour, double. P-type, also really short and, and, and simple. This upcasting facility really proves here. It's a pain to write every time, but it provides a lot of here good stuff for the user. Yeah, and we have really big important decision to make. Should we stay compatible with duration as much as possible? Because uh, it's there already, it's part of the standard, it, it has ratio, it has, it, it's, it's done already, people already learned how to use it. Mm. Or we should try to improve it using the latest features. The problem with duration is also that it already exists. And actually duration should be an alias of all my quantity type. I cannot easily move below, below duration because this is an API break, even if the interface is the same, yes? So, so, so it's a problem, what to do with duration, anyway. So let's try to experiment with more, a bit more with the latest C++ features. Let's go again to the C class types in non -template, template parameters, and let's think about ratio being a value type rather than a, than, than, than a type, being a value. So instead of having template ratio with, with two parameters, let's have a simple structure with two parameters. Uh, we are doing all of the stuff that is being done with template programming with ratio. We are doing all of this in the constructor, just to make sure that if you put here things like two and four, you will have one and two in, in, as a result. And we also can provide converting constructor, for example, from std ratio, if someone wants. And we provide this operator that is mandatory for, for, for template metaprogramming stuff. Also, we can provide some additional operators, like operators multiply and divide for, for multiplying and dividing dimensions. And also do greatest common division here, operations with consex that we've learned today that are not that fast as we would like to, but I hope this is quite a implementation that at some point consex actually will be fast because we'll, we'll force implementers of the compilers to make it fast for us. With this, this is the previous solution for division operator. This is nearly the same as I have right now in my library. So it says that, let's keep this requires clause because it's not that important, but this is the real type. It has dimension divide. So you have to divide dimension d1 and d2 here. We have divide unit 
and you have to find common representation for rep1 and rep2. So here we have this <coughs> unit that has dimension divide of d1, d2, and ratio divide on the ratio and ratio, and upcasting traits, of course. In C++20, we can write this this way. So instead of using std ratio divide, which uses also ratio GCD and then the ratio sign and other stuff there to do this calculation that we did in the constructor and operators on the previous slide, we are doing everything in consexp, which should be faster, theoretically. Of course, we'll have to measure. And it's, as I said, I think there's a quality of implementation stuff that we just have to learn how to do consexp in compilers. But let's not, not stop on this one. Try to make all the dimension a value type. So let's make exponent using base dimension and value. Let's make the dimension store compile time vector that unfortunately didn't make to, to C20, even though we hope, but we are really close to making it work for compile time context. We have initialized a list to initialize this vector, and we have again operator star and divide to produce correct dimension here. Sorting vector of values is much easier than sorting a type list. Should be faster. And there are no class template instantiations needed in order to do it. So for template metaprogramming, it should be much faster. With this, we can then write that our dimension velocity is just a value in line concept of x base dim length 1, x base dim time minus 1, and do the same alias. See that we don't have any more problems with forcing using of make dimension t, which modules actually can help us. Because here, the constructor and those operators already provide all of this, this stuff that's needed, like sorting of stuff and, and, and truncating of the, of the types of the elements of the division. So we don't have to use this helper anymore. It's done by this class already. However, we lost the ability to upcast to a dimension velocity because we have a vector of values. And you can't easily say that vector of values of time and, and at length is a velocity. Maybe we will need some, I don't know, hash map or something that will map one to another. But, but then th it's not that easy. And, and then we will not be able to, to express it because it's always expressed in the base units rather than in velocity one. But in those classes, exp and dimension has sense only in a compact time context. They should not exist in our binary code. Those are only needed as a non-class template parameters. They should vanish after the code is generated. So let's try immediate functions for them. const eval, const eval, const eval. And this will not work in C20. We cannot make const eval object yet in order to put it to a, to a class template argument. But maybe it will be possible for C++23. So we will be able to create classes that exist only for compile time with some logic that is much easier to do than with template metaprogramming. These are the possibilities that should be mm, like analyzed while implementing this library. So with this solution, this is the original current implementation, we can go to this. That you have just unit ratio divided by another unit ratio, dimension divided by another dimension, and this. It's much shorter, and it theoretically should be much faster, because there are no template associations involved here. Assuming that ratio, that, that, that context implementation in a compiler will be fast, yes? So I think that class types in non-template parameters are one of the most important features for, for um, template metaprogramming com compilation performance uh, for things that we can express as values rather than types. We could try to use it and explore this in these things. And with const eval objects that could be provided later on in the standard, I think that our libraries could be made faster, a lot faster. Or when compilers will start jitting context functions. So we have a few design questions to solve still. What to do with std chrono duration? 
Yes, should we keep the interface and use like std ratio or make a value ratio or maybe do more changes? Or how to work with duration? We cannot put ourselves before below the duration because of ABI. Or maybe you should break the ABI and put us our that ourselves. We can provide the conversion operators between duration and quantity, yes, of time. But then it will need to provide some partial specialization for this specific duration. I mean, uh, sorry, quantity of time. What is the best way to add support for absolute quantity values and temperatures to library? Should we provide strong types and the casting traits for quantity types somehow? It will make compile time maybe slower for other types, but, but the error messages will be shorter. Should we provide aliases for quantity of units to provide meters of int, like seconds of int, yes? To work around CTAT problem. Oh, and I've seen in one of the libraries that they are also providing in a, in a template argument, they're providing the, the non-linear scale. You can provide any scale, it can be linear, algorithmic, or logarithmic, or anything. Logarithmic, I meant algorithmic. So, should we add it, or is just enough like this? And if someone wants a logarithmic scale, it, it will just build on top of it, yes? What is enough? Because every new parameter to a template will make error messages longer. More decent questions uh, you can find on my, on my GitHub. There are like 20 right now, and the list is growing fast. So let us join forces. I think that we really need physical units library in our standard library. Having a separate external library like mine or Boost or other is not a solution because Boost unit is like 10 or 15 years on the market. I don't know exactly when it started. But I am working as a trainer with many companies that are doing things for aviation, for car navigation, and I know what problems they have. And, and this is not much different from what I show you for in, in open source software. This is, this is how we write code right now, even though Boost Unit is already there for many, many years. We have to put something in the standard. Why to join? C++ community and industry really need this library. It's a great opportunity to learn C++ 20 and 23 maybe. Already, as you've seen, there are a lot of features that you can use here. So if you are stuck in C++ 98 or 11 project, join me and you can have a good playground here. And it's an interesting and hard challenge to solve. I like challenges. I don't know how, how about you, but it's a really interesting challenge to solve. Uh, the question is, should we create an ISO C++ study group for this and I'm for, for Unis TS? Or is it too small for a TS? It's also one of the questions we should answer and maybe if we decided, we should provide the paper for, for Cologne to create a, a study group for it. Please help. I'm looking for code reviewers, for contributors. I'm not the smartest guy here. You are smart guys. I am just really personally involved in this and would like to make it work. I'll help you or you can help me. I don't care what is the, direct, the, the, the order here. Questions? Yes? Uh, just a side note. What was the price of that mark code? The, the, the price? It was at the very beginning. It was really, really expensive. Half a so, million. Yeah, half a billion. So I think that's worth to have a study group. <laughs> yeah? That's just my opinion. Yeah, so the comment is that, that the Mars climate limiter was really expensive, and this is the price of, <laughs> of study group. <laughs> yeah, 300 million dollars, yeah. We can do a yes? From that. What's, <laughs> what's the reasoning behind separating quantities from units? Because I've heard that before, but my naive thing would be, you know, each unit is a type, it's got a, um, a numeric inside, and you need climate conversions. Why is that a bad idea? So what is the reason to separate quantity and the units as a types, yes? Yeah. As types. Uh, <laughs> I, right now, it's hard to tell me exact solution. As, as you've seen, the, the, the code that's using uh, quantities may be better, and it's also better from theoretical point of view, how it should be defined. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm asking is why. Like, mm -hmm. you, know, you said several times in the slides, uh, meter is a, a quantity, or it's a unit, not a quantity. Like, yeah, it's a quantity. Like, we'll be fine. I, I wonder why I'm wrong. 
I think it's more like a theoretical question rather than a practical one, yes? That we should, shouldn't think about units as, as quantities. It's that, that the meter is not, it's not a, it's not, it's not length. It's just the specific unit of, 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 of measuring length. Yeah, but uh, you probably agree, yeah. The point is that, that that writing meter is is easier than writing quantity of length or length of meter. Yeah, it's it's, it's I think it's it's true. Um, but on the other hand, we would like to write things like we we want to play with length, not matter what the unit is, and then uh, that, that, that is when the length is needed. So we need length anyway, and of course we can write another alias template on the length of meter. That's a meter. But but we need but we need length anyway yes we, we yeah we have concepts for this yeah then it's independent of the unit you have the length concept and mm -hmm. for specific units you have the, the type. Mm -hmm. I have a question now. How would you encode the fact that you can convert meters to kilometers but not meters to seconds in the type system if it's not separate? You would have to have an intermediate conversion to some standard basis. Yeah, I don't know how it would work. I mean, this gives you the, the yeah, sure. type system tells you this is convertible. With, with a factor and this variable is like a bit content. Yeah, sure. Otherwise, it wouldn't be part of the type system in any way. Yeah, you would still have the quantity template, but not the length template. Because now, right now, we have the alias template for length. So it says it's a quantity of dimension length with uh, unit meters and ratio of one. Mm -hmm. And if you just have meters as directly quantity uh, of, uh, of. So, so you're talking about this, this change, yes? Physics you sometimes need um, fractional power to prove. You need like yeah. length to the two thirds. Mm -hmm. That's like a thing in physics. Now, if you would just use meters and kilometers, you would get very different results. You need to put the power in the dimension. Otherwise, it's it's just not going to work, right? Yeah, but you still have a limit in the end. Yeah, but so like you would still need. If you, you would lose the fact that if you square it and then convert, it's it's the same as if you convert and then square. Maybe I got that wrong. Um, I, I, sure. I don't think it's so because it, in the end it will still alias the same quantity template. Mm -hmm. So the same information would be provided in both cases. You just have you, you don't have the alias length of meters, but instead directly have a alias yeah. meter. Yeah, that is confusing. Let's yeah, yeah, we, we <laughs> yeah. So so yeah, I think that discussion we can like like this continue in the library in a week session tomorrow, for example. Yes. So basically, the, the discussion here was about about this. Should we have a length like a quantity of dimensional length, or we should just have meters without this length alias? Yes? And you would expect a not using double, because a lot of the time, uh, a lot of what I do requires A equals B, both, of, both A and B have the same dimension, but the ranges that are representable by the underlying numbers are different, and we don't want them to overflow or underflow. <coughs> So the question is, uh, should I, did I think about not using doubles? Yes, that's why I have this representation parameter here, yes? And that's why I'm also using the, those, <laughs> those tricks that uh, duration is doing. So there is like treat as floating point type trait for, uh, that you can specialize for any of your custom type saying that's a floating, floating point like or not. So you can do implicit casts or not. But, but uh, I'm still don't know if we should like keep the integral support because all of the libraries on the market don't have integral support, work only on the floating points uh, by default, and don't have this truncation stuff that we, can, well, that we learned from and we have in chrono. I don't know if keeping this, this, this has sense in for time, probably yes, but for all, most of the units we have so strange units ratio conversions that we end up with double anyway or we have so big truncation er errors that, that having int isn't, doesn't have sense. Whatever is represented in numbers mm -hmm. rather than uh, rather than something that's part of the unit library. Yeah. So the comment is that over overflow handling should be a part of the of the type itself rather than unit library. I think yes. It's it's your type yes, and, and you know what uh, what type with which type you are working with, and if you want to make it overflow safe, make it overflow safe yes. For for my point is that I just have to ensure that when I calculate a ratio, 
from some two different dimensions, I don't overflow. Because th th for issue, I provide the, the integral type. Uh, Chrono library does it nicely for, 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 for this for, for, for S2 ratio. It's making sure that there is no overflow for, for, for calculating this, this division stuff. For this value ratio that I started to implement, I still don't have this support, but it's, easy, it's possible to implement and provide some static asserts or errors saying that there is an overflow, provide some other type. Mm -hmm. Yes, are there any other questions? Is it the question? No. <laughs> okay, so in such a case, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any concerns, questions, or suggestions, please find me. I'm here until Thursday, and Friday I have to leave, unfortunately. But you can find me on, on GitHub, on, on, on Skype, on, on LinkedIn, or anywhere. Or ISO meetings, or maybe we'll see you in CPTCon. See you there. Thank you.